one little lamb. How would you like to become one of my puppets? Very good. Now follow my command. Greetings, everyone. In today's video, we'll be covering yet another exceptional modifier from Oma Flies's Society of Muses. Please welcome the seventh of the Astral Council, Puppet Master Hades. Puppet Master Hades is a Shadow Element DPS unit. She belongs to the Olympus faction of characters and uses Divine Grace as the resource to execute her skills. Her basic attack has four sequences and alternates between her two Puppet Lews and Nympha. It's important to note that Hades will either gain Divine Grace or lose Divine Grace depending on which Puppet is currently attacking. Any attacks from Luce, whether it is a skill or a basic attack, will consume Divine Grace on hit. Any attacks from Mintha, whether it is a skill or a basic attack, will grant Divine Grace on hit. The first sequence of her basic attack will always consume one Divine Grace. The second will give plus five, the third will give plus two, and the fourth will give plus two. A total of nine Divine Grace will be granted after each full rotation of her basic attacks. With that in mind, if you are ever in a situation where you need to gain Divine Grace, simply performing more than one sequence of her basic attack will net you more Divine Grace. Likewise, if you need to lose some Divine Grace, performing the first sequence of her basic attack and either let the sequence timer reset or animation cancel the rest of the sequences and repeating the first will be a good way to manage how much Divine Grace you're losing, with precision. Hades's passive will activate when her Divine Grace is between 25% and 75%, and will not work if it is lower than 25 or higher than 75. While her Divine Grace is between 25 and 75, her passive will grant her one chthonic mark every six seconds. For every chthonic mark she possesses, her crit rate will increase by 3% and her crit damage will increase by 5%. She can have a maximum of 4 marks granting her at max stacks 12% crit rate and 20% crit damage. While Hades is in possession of 4 chthonic marks, holding down the attack input will unleash Luce and Mintha's dance duo mode, allowing them to relentlessly attack the enemy targets for 5.5 seconds, independent of Hades. In addition, her crit rate increases by 12%, crit damage by 36%, and fixed damage increases by 6,000 for 9 seconds after the skill cast. While the dance duo mode is active, Hades cannot use any skills. She does not gain or lose Divine Grace for her puppet's attacks, nor will she gain any more marks. Be sure you are casting her ultimate before this yes, ability yes, is triggered, and not after, because casting it will cancel the skill and recall the puppets. Her ultimate evasion will greatly slow the attacker's movement for four seconds. Her first skill, Shadow Dance Twirl, is used to alternate between Luce and Mintha. After skill one is cast, Luce and Mintha will enter the partner dance mode, this mode's activation can easily be identified by the Luce and Mintha marks both being present. The first time skill 2 or 3 is cast after they enter the partner dance mode, they will release a coordinated attack on the enemy. In addition to entering the partner dance mode when skill 1 is used, skill 2 and 3 will turn into their enhanced forms. If her dodge effect is not on cooldown, casting skill 1 will greatly slow the locked on target for 4 seconds and dodge effect will go into cooldown after this effect is triggered. Skill 2, Puppet Show, Prelude, deals shadow damage to the enemy targets. In addition, depending on which puppet is being controlled, inflict on the enemy either Dark Sea for Loose and Death Swamp for Mintha. Enemies under the effect of Dark Sea and Death Swamp will take damage over time shadow damage every two seconds. Do note that in order to successfully trigger the effects, the skill's animation must not be cancelled. Skill 3, Puppet Show, March, unleashes a barrage of attacks dealing AoE shadow damage to the targeted foe and adjacent targets. This skill will gather and drag nearby targets closer to Hades, 
Do note though, this effect will be negated if the skills animation is cancelled. In addition, while in the partner dance mode, this skill is changed into puppet show, rando, which will allow Luce and Mintha to perform a coordinated attack when skill 3 is cast. Her ultimate puppet show, End, launches Luce and Mintha at the enemy dealing several instances of AoE shadow damage. In addition, increase the team's crit rate by 3% and crit damage by 15% for every Shthonic marks Hades possessed. Furthermore, her Divine Grace will be resetted to 50 every 3 seconds. These effects will remain active for 12 seconds after her ultimate is cast. If the ultimate is triggered while in a team comp with Oneros, the team will gain energy and Divine Grace every 3 seconds. If energy or Divine Grace is no greater than 30, gain a plus 25 to Divine Grace or energy. In addition, all Olympus modifiers' total damage is increased by 60%. These effects will last for 12 seconds after the ultimate skill chain is cast. When it comes to functors, Hades is not dependent on hers, so free-to-play players can safely skip her functor. For those who are interested, her signature functor Herald, Cerberus, increases the fixed damage bonus while in dance duo mode from 6,000 to 8,000 at functor tier 1. This increases to 16,000 at tier 5. Furthermore, it allows Luce and Mintha to deal an additional 1200% dark elemental damage during their dance duo mode. Both of the four-star Olympus functors are serviceable, especially at tier 5. Herald Melampus is pretty great if your Hades need more crit rate, but damage-wise it's pretty mid. I did some light testing of the free-to-play five-star functor and Herald Laelpaz. <laughs> Herald Layer Lapse is a solid DPS option at high tiers. Unfortunately, activating the dodge effect using skill 1 does not grant us the buff, and we have to perform a proper dodge. That aside, the damage is decent. To get the effect for the Gen Zone Functor, I decided to use the Thousand Burials skill chain from Tsukuyomi and Buzembo. It's a 5 second on demand time fracture, which is just enough time for Hades to get off her dance duo skill. The default Gen Zone Olympus Functor will work well as a stat stick. Even though Hades can't trigger time fracture herself, pairing her with mods that can trigger zero time helps alleviate that issue to some extent and allow her to benefit from the damage buff from the second effect. For sigils we want Dark Plague for slots 1,3 and 5. This set was made for Hades and greatly improve her dance duo skill. In addition to the 10% buff to shadow damage, the user will also gain a bonus instance of damage that will ignore the enemy's resistance for 9 seconds. When taken into consideration the insane amount of damage dance duo can output in its 5.5 second duration, the choice here is a clear one. For slots 2, 4 and 6, Acheron Obol will work wonders. Since Hades doesn't really suffer from resource issues, this set will just further amplify her damage. As a ranged character, she can easily activate the set bonus with her basic attacks. In addition, her basic attack not only allows her to gain Divine Grace, but they also consume it, making triggering the set's effect extremely easy for her. For enchantments, we're going for the classic DPS staples, so crit rate, crit damage, attack, elemental bonus damage, and skill damage. In the future, we will gain the ability to further upgrade our characters via power-up mods. The following mods are going to be the ones you want to unlock to get the best out of Hades. 
For slots 1 and 2, we want two remote reinforcement factors. These will increase range damage by 12%. One judge mod to increase damage dealt to enemies above 85%, HP by 19%, and one executioner mod to increase damage dealt to enemies below 40%, HP by 9%. For slots 3 and 4, we want two mutation magnetic fields. These will give us a 24% damage buff base on our remaining HP. We also want two evocation fields. These will give us a 15% damage buff for having a tier 3 ether code active. For 5 and 6, we want one meta awareness. This will allow Hades to have 45 divine grace the second she takes the field. 2. Kinetic correction to increase damage dealt in modifier mode by 45%. And lastly, 1 Telekinesis Vector 3 to increase skill 3's base damage by 7.5%. When it comes to Aether Code, Full Deliberation Unspoken is going to synergize best with her preferred playstyle and offer the most overall damage. This path will take some time to master, but the amount of bonus damage it provides cannot be overlooked. Aside from insane neutral game damage, this path will also allow Hades to gain Chthonic Marks at a faster interval, further increasing our damage capabilities, since they are required to proc Hades' strongest skill. Your goal when using Hades will be trying to get those four Chthonic Marks as soon as possible. Follow these steps to make sure you're able to do so in a timely manner. First and foremost, when Hades take the field, her Divine Grace will be at zero, and the active puppet is always Mintha. This is very important to remember, because you're going to want to stay on Mintha until you have accumulated at least 40 plus Divine Grace. Use a combination of skill 2 and skill 3, two times each while weaving in basic attacks when skills are on cooldown. By the time you accomplish this, you should be sitting at 40 plus Divine Grace. From there you can use skill 1 to swap to loose. The first skill cast after swapping will grant and consume Divine Grace, but don't let that bother you. The amount gain or lose will be very minor. Continue to weave in basic attacks when Divine Grace is at 50 plus. You want to start using your skills on loose, but don't spam. Use a skill, followed by a full rotation of your basic attack to offset the Divine Grace lost. If Divine Grace drops to around the 35 mark, use skill 1 to swap back to Mintha, but this time use your skills accordingly since you are no longer starting from zero. Before using your marks, be sure to have your Divine Grace between 40% and 60% to get the most damage out of our red codes. It's okay to spam her skills, but only do so after you have acquired the four Chthonic marks already. If you are dealing with a lot of trash mod, it might be a better play to just burn through them with your skills. Hovering on 70s or low 30s is fine, especially when using her in a standalone team without Oneiros. You can always cast your ultimate to reset the meter, but against beefier targets use your skills accordingly while weaving in basic attacks. When it comes to team comps, your proficiency with Hades is going to be a determining factor. If you are still having issues controlling her Divine Grace, I would not recommend running her with Oneiros. On the other hand, if you are quite comfortable managing her Divine Grace, then of course running her with Oneiros is ideal. Before we go over her possible comps, let's quickly go over Oneiros' support build and ether codes. For her skills, prioritize Fairy Tale Illustrated and Woolly Lullaby. If you're short on resource, this will allow her to still be a solid support to Hades even with low investment. For sigils on slots 1, 2 and 3, we're going to be using Obelisk of Light. For slots 4, 5 and 6, we want Nibelungen lead. This is going to increase the rate of which her ultimate is charged by 30%, in addition to a 30% damage boost to her ultimate's damage. In the future, we want to add Myat's judgment to her build. It has multiple benefits, but the one we care about is that 30% damage buff to ultimates. So for rank Omega Future Oniros run Obelisk for slots 1 and 5. Run Judgment for slots 2 and 3. Run Nibelungen Lead for slots 4 and 6. This setup kind of upends her current build, so I would recommend just lightly investing in her now, and fully build her once Judgment is out if you're short of resources. For Aether Codes we want two yellow and one red, with the most important one being the Chamber of Hypnos code. 
This will allow her to decrease the enemy's resistance to light and shadow damage by 25%. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the topic of team comps. Her best comp will consist of herself, Oneros, and Phantasmal Dawn Hera. This comp provides several benefits to a character who is already pretty strong on her own. The first, of course, being Hera. The damage buff from Hera's skill 2 and ultimate will greatly enhance Hades' damage output, especially if you have her signature functor. Our second is Oneros for that 25% shadow resistance shred. With her on the team, we get access to the Fantokini Fancy Ultimate skill chain, which will increase the damage dealt by Olympus modifiers by an insane 60%. And finally, we get the benefits of the sustained combat bonus and the modified mode gen zone bonus for having three Olympus modifiers in the team. This will extend the duration of modifier mode and increase the mod index multiplier charge speed, in short, allowing the team to do more damage. This is going to be your premium Hades comp and it's complete overkill for general play. For players who don't have access to Phantasmal Dawn Hera, your team will consist of Hades, Oneros, and Heimdall. In this comp, Heimdall will act as a Hera Light, providing a damage buff, crit rate or energy to teammates inside her Ring of Reason. Use three yellow codes for Heimdall if your team needs crit rate and three blue for more damage. Of course, you can run Hades with Comet Ray Zenki and Hell if you have her. Hell can provide a 30% shadow damage buff to the team after casting her ultimate. Zenki will be extremely useful in places where you need to deal with a lot of trash mobs due to her grouping capabilities while using her yellow Aether codes, even with low investment. And last but not least, my favorite Hades team comp. This team consists of Hades, Bastet, and Jin A. In this comp, Jin A will be using three blues for her Aether codes, but the one we care about is the Inner Confusion, four elements code. This will inflict armor break on the enemy, allowing them to take 10% more damage. Bastet has a 9% shadow shred built into her skill, one, although that doesn't sound like much on its own. When we pair it with her blue Aether codes, things really start adding up. The first code will reduce the cooldown of her skill, three. The second, among other things, will increase the max number of traces she can possess to three. And final blue ether code, Judgment, will allow skill one, who already have a 9% shadow shred to further shred the enemy's shadow resistance by 12% for every trace consumed when it is used. And of course, Jin A and Bastet's ultimate skill chain further increases shadow damage by 30% for 12 seconds. This is the team I would recommend to those who are still having issues controlling Hades' Divine Grace perimeters. With Oneros being off the team, casting Hades' ultimate can serve as a reset if you ever lose control of her Divine Grace. This also frees up Hera if you are running the Hades, Hera, Oneros combo. Amorphis is a place filled with wonders, whether you're there for the art, music, festive gatherings, or to indulge yourself in tales of legendary heroes who have long been lost to time. But among its many wonders, the seventh of the Astral Council, the Puppet Master Hades is undoubtedly a wonder to behold. Oh, <laughs> 
私の劇に